Okay, this video is going to delve into a better explanation of why I prefer to believe timing is such a critical aspect for a hitter to understand as well as the coach to understand to better equip his hitter to perform better in the games. To understand this value, let's divide the space between the hitter and the pitcher into three sections. The first section given about a five feet stride or if not longer. So the first section and all these sections are approximations. But let's just say for the sake of this video that section one will be the first 15 feet from the mound in towards home plate will be section one. Section two will be approximately 20 feet wide and it's the middle section between the pitching mound and home plate. Section three is the last 20 feet between the pitching mound and home plate. It has been my experiences and studies as a baseball coach, hitting coach, that most of our baseball and softball communities, when we work with our hitters, we really put our concentration on the last 20 feet where the hitter is standing. And we delve into all the mechanics and technique and we analyze and get that great software and compare and contrast average hitters, great hitters, amateur hitters, pro hitters, and we just shred up what is going on with all the head parts, the, the shoulders, the knees, the back elbows, the slots, the giddy extensions. We analyze our hitters as if though they're golfers. We look at our hitters as if though they're ones like golfers who are hitting a stationary object. And the most important part of hitting we retreat is this last section, section three. Having been a former player myself and who had very little instruction during the 70s and in the 80s, and if it was, it was from the Charlie Lau hitting book of 300 and, and the Ted Williams Science of Hitting. And basically those books gave me a good platform to build from. But when I sat down and really analyzed what I was doing, a lot of my success rested what I, how I managed sections two and really section one. What I want our baseballs and softballs communities is to realize is this, that what really truly happens to the hitters in sections three is basically predicated upon what happens in sections two. And what happened in sections two is really predicated upon what happens in section one of this diagram. Obviously the last part we all know is the hitter and the hitter responding to what he sees in sections two and in sections one. In section three we can just basically call this the mechanics, the technique, the movement. But the movements are predicated upon how early the hitter picks up the ball in sections two. If the hitter picks up the ball in the middle of section two, basically the race is almost over. There is a, a, a feeling of, uh, of hurriedness and panic. I gotta make up for lost time. And often as coaches, what we see the hitter do is sometimes to respond to uh, seeing the ball late, in section two, they drop their shoulder, they collapse their back knee, they pull their head out, they pull their shoulders out, um, they cast their arms out. And these are only results because they just see the ball late in section two and they're trying to make up for lost time. So as coaches, we need to realize that there's more than just what the hitter's doing in the section three, the last section. We need to instill in our hitters and teach our hitters how to be more aware 
a flight path and picking the ball, the ball up early in the flight path. And there's things that we could do physically in section two to, to prepare us to move into the last section in section three, which is our mechanics and technique. I've discovered and, and I've learned and, and, and felt from my, my own experiences how to better teach the hitter to be prepared to see the ball early in section two by managing section one. This is where everything begins. When the batter stands at home plate and looks out at the pitcher, we've been taking for granted for years how the hitter thinks and responds and watches and looks at, how the hitter integrates himself with the pitcher's delivery, I have experienced, and maybe you have too, and I've witnessed the, the players I have coached that a lot of times when I'm even just doing batting practice, when I look at the batter's eyes, I can already see a disconnection before I throw the ball in at them for batting practice. I can see in their eyes they are not responding to me as a pitcher. They're not integrating, not fitting in with me. It has taken an extremely long time to put into words um, these experiences. But even harder is and it's taken a diligent efforts to be able to explain to hitters what they need to do and change their concept of thinking when they look at the picture. And I've learned how to, to best explain it as to, to define what a pitcher's common denominator is. When you can explain to a bat what the pitcher's common denominator is, they don't stand at home plate anymore wondering how they're going to fit in. They're, they're not mindless, and they're not just thinking, okay, be relaxed, be calm, think positive approach, which all the sports psych you know, specialists tells our, our baseball and softball hitters to perform. And, um, and sometimes to me personally, I get uh, rather uh, frustrated with, with the sports psychologist because I know that sometimes it may appear that players are getting better, I've rationed it out that those players who get better from sports psychology are players who just accidentally bumped into this knowledge. And they may go on a streak with it, and all of a sudden it stops. There's no reason to stop anymore. When you have knowledge and understanding, you can repeat, you can repeat, and you can repeat. In the video series, the world's greatest hitting formula. I give specific details of not just explaining what the common denominator is, but I give teaching tools. I explain to coaches how to explain this concept to the hitters. If you're just a hitter trying to learn this concept, you hear me speaking to you as a teacher um, to better understand the concept of how to manage the common denominator and even fit in with your tempo. I strongly encourage you, if you are a coach who takes your craft very serious, if you are a player, baseball or softball, and you take your craft ultra serious and are, are aiming for the highest level, you don't want just fluff. You don't want a ch just a cheerleader to cheer you on as a sports psychologist, you know, uh, coaches do, and they mean good. You need information. You need to have pure knowledge that's going to show you how to time and time again, how to fit in and how to integrate with section one in the hitting process. Section one will influence section two, and section two will influence section three.